What's going on guys? This is Empty Box, and today we're going to be talking about driving, specifically the inputs that you have at your fingertips, as well as your foot tips, or whatever they're called, your soles of your feet. Yes, the gas brake and the steering wheel, they all do different things. They all do things that you might not actually be aware of. Now this might seem like a very crazy idea, but when you're driving a streetcar, you're always told that the steering wheel does the steering, the gas pedal does the going, the brake pedal does the stopping. However, when you're talking about going fast, this isn't necessarily that simple because they all have different effects and they all can be utilized at the same time, actually. So anyways, let's go ahead and begin to talk about uh, the different inputs. Fired up the centripetal circuit here in iRacing, basically just a skid pad. We're going to accelerate here in the SR8 radical. Just going to kind of hold this line here. Okay, we've got decent speed decent control input. We're pretty much following that line. Let's go ahead and release the throttle. Hey, you saw that coming, right? I didn't do any more steering. Now my car's steering a whole lot faster. This is kind of weird, not going to lie. Why is that? Because the car had more grip available for the speed. It requires less force to turn at a lower speed. This is why a car can obviously go through a hairpin corner and not blow up in the process. At a high speed, such as 200 miles an hour, you'd never be able to make a hairpin corner. Tires just don't have enough grip. So, now that we know releasing the throttle will tighten up our turning radius, what happens when we smash the throttle? Of course, the steering radius gets significantly larger. Why is that? Because more power is shifted backwards under acceleration. You think about when you leave a stoplight in your street car, you tend to lean back a little bit. That's just the weight shifting to the rear end. Usually you don't ever think about that in a street car, but that is what is actually happening. So let's go ahead and apply a little bit of braking while using the throttle. Let's see what happens. Mm-hmm. Car tightens up a little bit. Why is this? This is because more weight is being transferred forward because you're applying the brakes. As you can see, the cockpit just kind of dipped down just a little bit. Think about when you're coming to a stoplight in your streetcar. Front end dips down, weight shifting forward. You have more grip on the front tires because there's more weight on the front tires. You think about a NASCAR car, they handle like absolute crap, yet they're able to go through banked corners really, really fast. Why is that? Because the banking essentially makes the car pushed into the circuit, uh, which can make them go faster. Formula One car, how do they go so fast? Downforce. What's the downforce doing? Essentially aerodynamically pushing the car into the ground, making the car, quote unquote, heavier, even though it's actually the same weight. According to the tires, it's thinking the car is heavy, so it has more grip. You think about a tank, for example, it's really going to dig into the surface. It's going to... It's going to bite because it's really freaking heavy. doesn't matter if you're on concrete or sand or whatever. Obviously, with something like a Radical or a Formula One car, not a whole lot of weight. But the real thing to take notice of is that your gas pedal and your brake pedal aren't simply used for stopping and going. There's a really famous quote by one of the greatest drivers ever that I'd just like to pull up right about now. It's amazing how many drivers, even at the Formula One level, think that brakes are simply for stopping the car. Now, if you know that quote, you know who said that. But if you don't, let's just say this. This guy won the Daytona 500, the Indianapolis 500, Formula One World Champion, Daytona 24 hours, Sebring 12 hours, pretty much everything under the sun. Oh yeah, he also did sprints and midget cars way back when. Yeah, Mario Andretti, probably the greatest driver ever to walk the face of this planet, and I mean that. If you don't believe me, go look at the guy's history. It speaks for itself. Pretty darn impressive. But that's specifically what he's talking about. You don't need to just simply use the brakes to stop the car, turn, mash the throttle again. Obviously, nothing's happening because I'm in high gear. You can actually use the brakes and the gas to balance the car out to get the weight balanced across the front and rear of the car to actually make it handle. Now, let's see. Let's pretend I'm going into a corner here. Braking, turning, that didn't work out, obviously. Just a good way to spin the car out and not be able to find a gear, even though I got the clutch in. Okay, that was kind of weird. 
But let's say I'm going in the same corner. I'm going to be braking. Apply a little bit of throttle. And we're on our way. Braking. Oh no, that didn't work. Why? Because again, too much weight on the front tires. Do the same thing again with a little bit of throttle. Or even just easing off the brake. And we can turn. Obviously this is a very rough example to demonstrate here on the centripetal circuit. But you'll see in the following clips specifically what I mean. So let's go ahead and roll that footage. To demonstrate this, let's take a couple of laps around Phoenix International Raceway here in the Sprint Car at iRacing. For those of you guys who don't know about Sprint Cars, they produce about 800 horsepower, have about the same weight as a Formula One car, and have an exceptionally short wheelbase. This makes them extremely tricky to drive and very sensitive. Definitely a great way to hone your throttle control and counter steering skills. But as you'll see, I'm not really doing a whole lot of steering. I'm just letting the car work basically just a little bit of brake get it to turn get back on the throttle just be nice and gentle with it a little bit of counter steer as needed apply the power and on my way it's actually very simple but extraordinarily difficult as you can see me totally screwing this up this is a very difficult car to drive in fact for you guys out there who claim uh, 1960s era Formula One is some of the most difficult cars to drive. These things were putting out about 400 more horsepower than those cars on <laughs> the same type of weight, same type of wheelbase. It's astounding anyone can actually drive these things. But really down in turn one there, that's the only corner I'm really doing all that much steering. Instead it's just all, all footwork basically. And yeah, you know how I mentioned Mario Andretti? He kind of cut his teeth on these types of cars uh, way back in the day. As you can see, too much throttle, the rear end comes around. Now let's get back up to speed here and I'll apply a little bit too much brake and you'll see the same type of thing happen. Again, in this type of car with huge horsepower, that's going to be power on oversteer. Uh, but here when we get a little bit too much breakdown in turn one, the car's going to want to do the same thing, only it's going to be just instantly. As you can see, we get back in the throttle and the thing just wants to come around because there's no weight on the rear tire. So when I instantly go ahead and smash the throttle to try and get the car to rotate, it's overloading that rear tire, getting some wheel spin, and then straight around. It's all about getting weight on the right front here on an oval into the corner and then coming off the corner getting weight into the right rear so that way you can drive it with the throttle. This is what he means by you don't just stop the car with the brakes. You're loading up a certain tire. The same thing goes for road racing. You're trying to load up that outside front tire going into the corner and then you're trying to get weight back onto the outside rear corner so that way you can drive off of the corner. If you just go ahead and mash the brake you're going to have no weight back there. The car's going to want to spin around like you just saw. If you have too much weight in the right rear, or in this case, or the outside rear tire, the car's just going to want to drive too much and it's just going to spin around because of too much power, get wheel spin, and just spin out like that. It's really pretty simple, but you just have to remember that you're not just stopping, you're not just going. What you're doing is affecting the weight that the tire has, because the weight is actually affecting the grip. You think about Formula One cars, how do they go so fast? Downforce. How do they generate downforce? What's that do? It essentially makes the tires feel more weight. They're more pushed into the ground. And therefore, they actually have more grip available. Now, let's take a ride around Laguna Seca in the Ford GT, paying particular brake inputs. Now, in the sprint car, we were using the brake with just a little bit of steering to turn the car. That was basically all that was happening from there on. Just use the throttle to control it. Here in a road racing scenario, we're going to be using the throttle and brake to balance the car to get the car to actually work properly, to get the tires balanced, to get front and rear grip even, so that way you don't spin out. You'll notice they're into the hairpin as well as into turn 5, and then the final turn, 
I'll be dragging the brake as well as the gas just a little bit just to try and even out the car. Under braking, as we already know, the car will tend to dip down because the front tires have more load on them. If I don't drag the brake just a smidge, a very small amount, uh, towards the end of the braking zone, what will happen is my car will actually pivot and rotate on the nose and I'll spin out on corner entry. You can also do the same thing by simply easing off of the brake just a little bit. Uh, this is something that's common with downforce driven cars where as the downforce comes off, as the weight on the tires, the grip that the tires are capable of producing rolls off, you have to roll off the brake just a little bit because you can no longer keep maximum braking when you have no downforce. You'll just lock the tires straight up. So here's, we're coming up to the final example here. Just a little bit of throttle being used. There's the blips, just a little bit, just a pinch, not even probably 10%, just to keep the car balanced uh, on turn in. And of course, they're on exit, just get back into the power nice and easy with a GT2 car. Let's go ahead and take a look back at those examples, slowed down a little bit. Now here we're approaching the turn one brake zone, or actually turn two, the first real turn, the hairpin here at Laguna Seca. It's a downhill brake zone, so the front tires are already going to be more loaded under braking. You have to be careful here because if you're not aware of that, your car will spin on entry. This is a very difficult corner to enter if you don't mix your throttle and brake inputs or you don't use your brake properly. You don't have to do this. However, I find it makes the car much more controllable and it is a good thing to know and to be able to utilize. Uh, because again, there really is no reason not to. There is no reason you can't use throttle and brake in a gentle manner together. And here we're approaching the turn five brake zone, another high speed braking zone where the car actually will go into a banked corner here uh, which will load up the right front in this case a little bit more. This is a really tricky corner to get right because you have to break into the corner. You have to do a little bit of trail braking to help the car turn through that banking uh, to make it properly. It's a really tricky corner to get right. But again, just a little bit of throttle to help put a little bit more weight on the rear tires or alternatively I could have eased off the brakes a little bit. Uh, you know, really it's driver preference, it's a driver style thing. Turn in at the same time, get as close as we can to that curbing, and then we're just going to apply the power on and just roll on out of the corner. This is again, is a really tricky corner here, especially on exit, because that does tend to come up on you rather quickly. Now we're actually approaching the next corner, turn six. This is an uphill left-hander with a very weird apex curbing that you have to take advantage of. What you're going to be seeing me is using the brakes to help the car turn in this situation. Just a little bit of brake, a blip as we downshift. Just mix those inputs, get the car balanced, using a little bit more brake towards the corner past the turn in point to help the car turn through the corner to clip that curbing. Because again, this is a corner where you really have to be spot on with your line. Otherwise, you will end up in the gravel or you will end up spinning out to the left side and probably getting T-boned. And finally, we approach the final corner. This is another medium high speed braking zone, relatively high speed here at Laguna Seca. You have to be really careful here because you need to get a good drive off of the corner to get a good straight line speed down the straightaway. A couple of blips there. There's one and there's two. And then we're going to roll off the brake just a little bit as we begin to turn in. The tire can only give us so much grip, so we have to release that brake a little bit. A little bit of gas, just a smidge to help get a little bit more weight on the rear end of the car. Uh, after the braking point, obviously the front end again loaded up. Get a little bit more weight so those rear tires begin to work a little bit. Transfers the weight out to the right rear corner in this situation. And then we can drive off the corner applying power as we go. And a nice smooth corner exit. And it's that's that. It really is that simple. You just got to turn the car in or excuse me, get the car stopped, turn the car in, get the car to grip, and go. Really simple until you actually try doing it because it's not really simple. But it is really simple when you look at it that way. This is not something that you really need to overthink. But again, your brake, your throttle, as well as your steering are used for much more than just simply stopping the car or simply making the car go. And that is one of the biggest things that you need to learn to be successful driving fast here in a sim.
Again, I'm not saying you need to be smashing the throttle down with the brake every single time, doing that massive throttle braking that people seem to love. But just a little bit, there is nothing wrong with that. It's not crazy. It's not out of this world. It's not a physics glitch or anything. It's something that applies to every last sim. It is simply put, getting the car balanced past the turn-in point. So, that's that. That's how you drive somewhat capably. You drive fast, I guess I should say. In the next episode, we'll probably be covering a little bit around taking lines through corners, finding the line, learning circuits, uh, and stuff along that line. So, that's that. I Bye. <laughs>